Hello! OK, I've done all the popular video formats recently. It's time for me to talk for ages about a toy line only I care about. And that toy line is... Britain Space. So basically, there was a company called Britons, and they produced a line of toys simply called Space. A little bit of setup for this one. So Britons, um, was, I think it was founded in like the late 1800s, basically making little lead soldiers for kids to play with. Yes, they used to make kids toy soldiers out of literally poisonous metals. Let's not worry about that now. They've stopped doing it. I really hope. Anyway, they invented like a hollow casting process, which basically meant rather than a solid lump of lead, it could be a partially hollow lump of lead, therefore saving on, well, lead, and meaning they could sell the uh, little figurines off cheaper, and therefore they became popular. And that went on for quite some time, and they ended up moving to plastic on like these little metal bases near the end of the 60s for you know, poisonous metal reasons. And, well, I remember them being a thing, but I was never particularly interested in toy soldiers, so I don't really have any specific memories of them. And um, they were very pricey and quite well painted, is all I can sort of tell you about them. Now, what I do remember was what Britons produced, and there were loads, loads of these in, like, a local shop. Because um, they were... Britons toys kind of didn't go into the mainstream toy shops. They were only in the sort of slightly weird ones. Possibly due to their priceness, I don't know. But there was a shop near us when I was growing up which uh, basically sold, like, toy trains and stuff, which, again, I wasn't super interested in. But I remember, like, walls of Britain stuff selling little farm tractors and little farm workers and all your farm accessories and a million different little toy um, pigs and cows and all your favourite farm animals. Now, the thing is, again, I wasn't particularly interested in those, I just remember them taking up the wall. What I was interested in was bloody Star Wars, and I tell you what, so were most of the other kids back in about 1981. So, Britons, not selling as many tiny toy pigs and soldiers as they were recently, thought, hmm, we must move into this space thing, and literally as a direct reaction to Star Wars, which a lot of toy makers did. Because, you know, I don't know if you've heard of Star Wars, it was quite big in the late 70s, and through into the 80s, and then through into infinity. Anyway, <clears throat> 1981 was the year when Britons launched space with these weird little dudes. So, as you can see here, you've got this metal base to stop them falling over because they're made of very uh, light plastic. And they've got the most 70s designs you could possibly imagine. Uh, which is interesting, as they weren't launched till 1981, but hey, you know, these things take a while to filter through, and often the people running these companies were a little bit out of touch. Especially if it was a company that mostly sold sort of toy tractors and tanks and things. Saying tanks now, did Britons ever sell tanks? I feel like that's something they must have done when they sold all the little toy soldiers. I don't know. That's not relevant. What's relevant is this guy. One of the many completely unnamed Britain Space Good Guys, known as the Star Guards. Yes. This one's got a backpack on, which uh, fits in something later. So, what can we tell from this? They've got little stickers that, if I remember, were put on at the factory, often on the wonk like this one. I don't know if you can make the face out there, but he's got very long hair and a very long moustache. They haven't painted the moustache, but... Yeah, again, he kind of looks like those old photos you see of your dad from 1974. Remember, this was 1981, but no, no, let's not get into that. <laughs> Retro-futurism, that'll be it. Got a little gun, which straps onto his arm, and he's in this action pose, yep. The Star Guards, well, they were an interesting bunch, actually. A lot of them were female. There was quite a good um, actual spread of male to female across all these, which is surprising for what sounds like a really stuffy old company like Britain's. So that's something moving away from the 70s, at least, I suppose. Uh, here is one of the ladies with long hair and her fishbowl... Very 50s kind of design, actually, to the fishbowl top here. It feels like sort of 70s TV up until the top of it, then it becomes 1950s, no matter you. In her dramatic guarding pose here. Zap, zap. That's the noise the guns make, I've convinced myself. And the guns are actually very interesting because some of them just have really long rifles that they hold in bizarre positions. Like this guy, whose his fishbowl appears to have completely filled up with, I don't know, mustard or something. But look at that. He's absolutely stretching his own back in almost inhuman proportions to sort of... Is it an action pose? Has Was he walking along with his weird rifle and suddenly... Blah, 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 noise, shoot me now. Woo. And then he, well, he's probably slipped a disc, to be perfectly honest with you. You go there, mate, and we'll look at the last figure. Yes, as you can probably tell, 
unfortunately, most of the little space bubble helmets have disappeared over the years. They're, they're the only three I have that actually still have the helmets. But there we are. Look, sir. Uh, She's holding this more like it's some sort of drilling device as opposed to a gun or something, but there we are. It was Star Wars. Everything had to be laser guns. That's the way it works. Right, now you may be asking yourselves, what do these Star Guards do? The answer, of course, is they fight against the evil aliens. Literally just called aliens, yep. <laughs> and here's one of them now. You will notice that the aliens have exactly the same bodies, just in a different colour plastic, um, but they do have this suspiciously Cylon looking blood red uh, helmet thing going on there, and red guns. Not always red guns, some of them were silver as well, as we shall see in a bit, but um, yeah, silver bases rather than the red, but exactly the same setup, just looking all evil. There's a lady one, and here is a man one. Here he is, looking suspiciously similar. Oh no, I don't have one of that pose on the other side, actually. But don't worry, we've got one of the weird... <laughs> <laughs> rifle gun. This might be my favourite. It looks like they're desperately trying to sort of pick up this rifle that's too heavy for them. So, oh, 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 go on with that, me lads. We'll be there in a minute. Oh. But yes, they are the evil aliens. At least we assume they're evil and the Star Guards are good. There is no backstory to Britain's space. None of these characters have names. We don't know what their situation is. We don't know why these two different factions are fighting. All we know is these are probably evil because they're aliens, and these are probably good because they're humans. And I mean, that's an assumption, to be perfectly honest with you. Anyway, these little old figurines, about half the size of a Star Wars figure. Here's a damn nerd cubed for uh, scale there, in case you're wondering. That standard Star Wars figure size, three three quarter inch. That's one of those. Good. Yep, they of course were all about the vehicles. That's what they were interested in selling. And here is one I actually had as a child. I don't know how I had quite so much of this Britain space stuff. I remember having it quite late. I have a feeling there was a big closing down sale somewhere, or they were just getting rid of a lot of them cheap once, because I had various bits and bobs of this. So maybe we bought them all second hand. I don't know. I never remember getting them from a shop, put it that way. They were things that were always sort of given as gifts that I remember. And look at that. What a device! And it's incredibly dirty where it's been uh, stored, and it's probably in somebody's garage for about 400 years. Actually, it's been in my garage for about six or seven years, I think, before I got around to filming it, so there you go. So, it is a spaceship. Vroom. That's the noise spaceships make. And look, there's two people in the orb, and they sort of have a gyroscopic gravity thing going on, so they always face forward and they never have to vomit, and their helmets never fall off. Now, you may be thinking, those are weird holes on the front. Actually, while I think about it, we should mention before we get into this, not all of these may be complete or have all the right parts, because I'm having to go by a handful of old catalogue photos as to how these things are built together. So if you are a Britain space expert and you notice slight variations from how these should be, please put it in the comments. And I mean, nobody will see it, but you know, you'll feel better. Right. There we are. It can set up like that. Look, that's cool, isn't it? Anyway, going back to these holes. Yes, there is, wait for it, a bit of a construction toy thing going on. Only very light. I mean, it's not like bricks like Lego or something, but yeah. You can remove bits, and they're all held together by this three-pronged system of... Oh, God, if this one wants to come out. Nope, I'm going to do this one because it appears to be jammed in. Brilliant. Two small little ones and a big one. Yes, connectors. It's as simple as that. And you can put different bits on, so we could now pop this on the back and if that wants to go in, which it really doesn't, oh dear, it's a bit knacked this one, that'll do, and that can be on the front, and now that's its guns, and it's all facing backwards, and that's no good to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that Spectrum Pursuit vehicle from Captain Scarlet, where they literally face the opposite direction from where they're going and watch what they're doing on a screen, which has got to be the most impractical design of anything ever. Anyway, that's that. But you get the idea. You can indeed take this off ah, and pretend it's his own little X-Wing TIE fighter thing. I'm pretty sure I did that as a child. So, if you are wondering why this one looks different, or this part, should I say, looks different to the rest. These are all plastic. These parts, these end bits, are solid metal. Which is why, if you find any of these second-hand anywhere, it's very unlikely these will have been broken. 
what is stamped on the side. Britain's 1981, England. Uh, I knew all that. But yeah, that's the idea behind that. Now, there's another idea that comes through in Britain's space, and that is for every vehicle, there is an equal and opposite vehicle. Right, so we know what that is, but here is the enemy variant, which I've got to say is a lot cooler. Look at that. I mean, the plastic's got all misty over the years, so you probably can't see, but there are two little figures in there. It's got the gyroscope thing going on as well, but also it rotates. Yes, yes, like a spinning thing. I love the design of this. It's got like a million different holes for all the different connectors, so you can fit whatever you like in it. And it looks like a weird ass green UFO. What more do you want out of life? Tell you what they want out of life, that knobule at the front to disappear so they can actually see where they're going. But hey, maybe that's their television for when they're watching their, I don't know, DreamWorks marathon or something. But yeah, I really like the design of that. Always did. But do you see where we're coming from here, where every time there's one vehicle, there's a vehicle for the other side which is similar. Speaking of which, let's look at all the rest I've got here, because my god, does this thing play out. Cars! Vroom. Don't remember seeing these back in the day, but yeah, little land vehicles, simple as that. Not very exciting, the good guys Starguard one here. There's just somebody in there, you've got a little bit of uh, stuff you could put on there, there we are. Let's connect that, and now there is a gun on the back, or you can put something on the top. You get the idea. But it's also got things on the bottom, so it could kind of have the wheels removed and then use it as like a cockpit if you're building something bigger. I don't know. Does that fit directly on there, actually? Looks like it might need a couple of connectors. Oh, no, that kind of works. Looks rubbish, but it kind of works. You get the idea. So, of course... Where is the equal and opposite reaction to this one? Where is the Aliens version? Here it is. The Aliens one, again, is cooler. It's got more wheels. Um, rather than things connecting to the bottom of it, though it does have some holes to facilitate that in a less um, exciting sense. It's got a little T connector on the back as, well, it's gonna be a gun in it, simple as that. But here's the thing with this one. As well as being a little land thing, you can remove all these. If this one ever comes off, ah, ah, we did it, and whoop, it, it does that now. I don't really know why. Um, I think you can remove the whole thing actually. If you, yes, there we are. And then, if you're careful, you can remove that and take one of the little dudes out. Oh, you can't seem to take the dudes out. They're actually stuck in. Hang on. Ah, there we are. Feet going little holes there. And look, there's, there's another chair. I mean, that's not the most exciting play feature in the universe, but it exists, unlike the other one which doesn't do anything like that. But what else have we got? We've got big vehicle, we've got small um, little land vehicles. Well, next up, I don't know how to describe these. Big guns, I think is the best description. Always thought these looked a bit like binoculars on sticks, and I don't think I'm wrong there. I'm actually going to remove these because they're so brightly coloured in the background, they're actually taking away from being able to see what the bloody um, things look like. There we are. So yeah, it is a gun on a stand. The stand, you will notice, is very similar to the wings we saw earlier, and by similar I mean literally identical. So yeah, basically these manoeuvre around and shoot things. They shot little round baubles apparently, which I don't remember. So maybe I did get these second hand when all the baubles had been lost. Um, and it's a simple spring mechanism. However, I did discover very quickly as a child, if you use these little peg connectors, you can pop that in there and wait for it. Yay! There we are, some more ammo to shoot. And what is the alien version of that? Kind of a spaceship one. I definitely remember having this part because it looks so much like a pair of binoculars, especially if you uh, ignore that part. So what seems very different at first glance is the good guys one. Oh, look, it's on a sort of stand and it's something to defend your base with. This is a spaceship. But yeah, as you've probably noticed, actually, they are pretty bloody similar. I mean, there we are, two seconds flat, that's turned into that, and actually we don't, oh, annoyingly, don't have the connectors on the, oh, they doesn't have the connector on the back, you would actually have to, I never realised that, I didn't have this one as a kid. Yeah, the, the spaceship looks more like that. <laughs> looks more like Johnny Five from Short Circuit, my god. So yeah, 
you've got your big guns for shooting things but also we're not there yet because we have weird bases which were effectively just platforms oh god i can't barely see that one there we are so it's like a platform and your guy here came with it here he is and essentially there would be a bit of string oh god oh, i have to push this down so hard <laughs> <laughs> Forgive the vibrations of the cheese platform. Seriously, it looks like it's made out of slices of Swiss cheese or something, doesn't it? Um, so this guy stands here. Bit of string on there, which you can um, move in and out. And look, he's got a hook, so he can slide down onto that. I can remember it being too fiddly as a child and never getting the string to work properly. An annoyance. Whereas, again, the alien one is just cooler. Look at this. It's got big claws connected together at the moment but they can come apart and ang, ang, ang. there we are they can go and pick up the good guy star guards or maybe the bad guy star guards i just don't know eh, eh. there we are i was dropped him well we've lost the war because we dropped the man exactly the same plot as return of the jedi well there we go those are all that i have of britain's space oh wait I may not be telling the truth because I've got some of the really weird shit they did later. So when they first started off, you had all this stuff. Then they kind of went off on a bit of a weird tangent, I'll be honest with you. For starters, the Star Guards got their own cyborgs. Yes, the good guy cyborgs, right. You will have to forgive these because A, they look exactly like Cybermen, but B, um, how can we put it politely? The rubber is fucked. <laughs> this is rubber from like the early to mid 80s. And oh, it's all just broken, all the little pegs have gone. It, it literally feels all sticky and melting. It's absolutely disgusting. It all sticks to your hands. <laughs> Head won't go on properly. But you get the idea. Basically, it's the same bodies again in silver, but they've given them weird rubber jetpack wings. You know, Doctor Who Cyberman, very obviously inspired head and an extra pair of weird arms for reasons i distinctly remember oh god the heads come off this one that's a good start i distinctly remember this one as a child because it has a weird dummy on one hand like that's not something that's broken off that's just how it was why would it have a dummy it makes no sense to me at all but it can grip it with its other hand and then it looks like that and the head's fallen off again these are very weird designs these they feel more like something out of doctor who than star wars you know and i appreciate the bit of uh, extra creativity now of course there was an enemy version the mutants Ooh, look at them being all mutanty i don't know if this one came with a gun or not look it's got the um hands for one of those long laser rifles but you couldn't actually put one in because there's something on its chest but yeah this one's got a big old insect head as you can see there a couple of scary arms in the background and the weird pose where it looks like they've snapped their own ankle well there we are we brought in the mutants to beat the star guards but they all fell over and snapped their own ankles the end exactly the same as the plot to empire strikes back anyway <clears throat> there are some extra figures i have here which i do find to be possibly my favorites now these are i think these are bad guy ones but they didn't have a good guy equivalent so i don't know maybe there's some third party or something and i can't quite work out what they're called um there's like a later repaint of them called terror raiders so maybe they were just called the terrors i don't know but look at that <laughs> a giant green mutant bastard this is the alien stuff we're after here look at that a weird gun that looks looks like it's it's backwards or something you know does it does it look better like that no no we're gonna stick like that um yeah with it's very hard to describe these ones aren't they vaguely insectoid but super alien really like the design of that but not as much as i like the design of this other one which just looks like his head has burst absolutely fantastic um yeah i don't it's britain's space is one of those things there's very few details out there um they didn't really reach any other countries or certainly not in any um particular numbers they were quite pricey over here for most of it so you didn't see a lot of them around and as i say i got most of mine second hand i'm pretty sure but there we are i certainly back in the day never saw whatever the hell is going on with the head of this thing bloody love it but yeah um what happened with britain space is they didn't sell that much of it <laughs> to be brutally honest with you um 
the company eventually was bought out. Um, it still continues to this day, called Britain's, but, you know, it's passed uh, ownership many times over the years, I imagine. And the new owners looked at this and went, hmm, right, we're going to sort of revamp all this in the hopes of more Star Wars-y sales. And they changed it to Britain's Star System. And most of it, at least in the early days, was just, like, repaints of these, but they're all white. So, like, the good guy vehicles were white with red accents, and I think the bad guy stuff was white with blue accents. They all look very similar. I think, again, going for a more Star Wars-y vibe, where, you know, your X-Wings and things like that tend to have brighter... Um, well, tend to be white, to be perfectly honest with you, so that's what they were going for. That is what they thought was the thing. And then they brought in a load of new bits. Um, they were, like, really weird stuff. Um, there was, like, some new vehicles and stuff, but also, like, a big vacuum-formed just sheet of thin plastic and that was the base and you could like put the ships on it or something i've never seen one in the flesh probably because they've all disintegrated by now but it looks like the cheapest thing in the universe Ugh. sudden jarring jump cut because i managed to get hold of something slightly after filming the rest of this video it is Britain's Muteron and Master. Yes, from look, Britain's Space, the little carrying handle, which is odd because there's no weight to this whatsoever. So this is one of the weird things they did just before the other company bought them out, I believe. It's just like a massive, weird green alien and alien babies and what's this thing? Oh, it looks amazing. The thing is, I'm not quite sure what it is because on the other side, upside down, it has the good guys equivalent, Cybertron and Robot, which is much, much less interesting than that crazy giant thing. I mean, it's still pretty cool. It's a weird robot with interchangeable stuff, but it's not this, is it? I'm going to assume it's this one for three reasons. One, this is actually upside down when you look at the orientation of the handle. Two, it directly says Muton and Master on a sticker they put on afterwards. And three, uh, again, it says on the side Muton and Master, Muton avec figurine. <gasps> what is this thing? Exciting. And the answer is, well, I can't see actually. It's in like a weird tray. Hang on. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's the green one. Oh, look at that. <gasps> it's got a thing with it. There's one of those weird vacuum-formed semi-battle station things I was telling you about. Oh, look! These are just called mutants, apparently. Oh, I thought the other guys were called mutants. I'm very confused. There are multiple mutants. Oh, look at that. There we are. All the early stuff. Oh, I've never seen that. Look at that. A sort of um, bonus silver... Hmm, sort of... <laughs> That's new, isn't it? The front bit, and that is just that recoloured. Interesting. Ah, oh, yes, you've got all your cyborgs and your other bits on there in incredibly, incredibly small detail. And there's, uh, we showed all of those today, pretty much, except the extra load of connectors, which I'm sure um, we can live without seeing, frankly. And there we are, new Cybertron robot. You see, no backstory, nothing. Just here's some toys. But what toys they are, friends. Oh, come here, you freakish monstrosity oh god it's broken already um no it's all right it's a construction toy <laughs> we'll live with it look at that oh that's almost like i don't know some sort of clash of the titans type thing absolutely amazing here's a flying one look with its wings and its nastinesses so i'm assuming oh god this gangly unpainted boy here looking suspiciously like something out of a cracker to be perfectly honest with you um can sit on here like that this peg goes right up his bum which is gonna well there we are you knew the risks of the job when you took it um there he is oh looks a bit bored doesn't he <laughs> um can we maneuver this foot around no is the answer to that oh he doesn't really sit on the thing too well oh, if we do that there we are that's better yeah he just you think he'd have his hands on the controls or something okay and all, I suppose, the stirrup. Right, that's that. There's a, oh, a little weird baby one. Is that is that something that launches off the others? I don't know. And we've got two pegs. What are they suggesting on the box for these? Not a whole lot, I'll be honest with you. The pegs don't really seem to be a thing on there, which I don't quite get. Apparently, this little guy's head comes off. Eh. Oh, has the head been glued on and the glue has gone white? No, no, I think I'm making that up. Uh, oh, look. It's spring-loaded biological weapon. Fire your head, my weird son. Yes, father. Oh, now I am dead, but I have helped the alien empire. Absolutely tremendous. Right. 
you can go on there like that. This thing, you've got to do it. Tremendous. Uh, that can launch on like that, I presume. Yeah, look at this. Oh ho ho. And uh, the, there's, there's these. <laughs> Where can this go? That can kind of fit under there, I suppose. No, that's a bit weird, that. He's just going to fire it straight down into the floor. That's not going to work for anyone. Good posability on this, though. You got the uh, ankles moving and the wrists and stuff, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. But it's the face that makes it for me. More tea, vicar? Mmm, lovely crumpets. I'm sure that's exactly what he would say, if there was any story to this, which there isn't. Ah, bloody marvellous. I like that a lot. That's going on a shelf somewhere. I can't tell you which one, but when I find out, I'll be sure to not let you know. Anyway, let's jump cut back. That is all I can show you of Britain's space. Mmm. So why did it fail? Because it failed pretty bloody hard, as far as I can tell. Very few people seem to remember this. Well... There's two big problems with it, kind of connected to Star Wars. The first is, there's no story to this universe at all. No story. Who is this guy? We don't know. What are the factions doing? We don't know. There is absolutely no backstory to this that I have ever found mention of. I certainly wasn't aware of it back in the day. I can find nothing to this day. It was just a case of, here are some toys, there's probably good guys and bad guys. Enjoy. And like, yeah, that's nice from a very um, loose play perspective, but when you're putting it up against something like Star Wars, with its incredibly defined universe and its characters that everybody loves, you can, you know, go in the playground and everybody knows who Darth Vader is and he's bad and Luke Skywalker's good and all that. This is just kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? It just doesn't have that hook to draw you in. And this leads us on to the second problem with it, which again... When you compare it to Star Wars articulated figures, the figures are just so much cooler, whereas these are just like very expensive versions of those little plastic army men you'd get in a bag. Do you know what I mean? Just much, much nicer. There's no particular character to them, except this guy. I love this guy. Get in focus. Thank you, guy. Um, you know, they're just sort of things. So when you start comparing to all the Star Wars articulated stuff with all the arms and all the cool vehicles that they sit in and that, this doesn't quite work. So there we go, Britain's Space. A very odd toy with sort of vague construction parts to it, but not quite. A sort of slightly outdated aesthetic on the characters, but not so much on the vehicles and something that, frankly, was just a bit too expensive and didn't catch the imaginations of the kids at the time. All that remains for me now is to get all the green bits together and make a weird robot. Yes! Right, boy, boy.